Welcome to The Life, presented by DC Lottery. Lots of people win. I'm Kelsey Nicole Nelson. He's Fred Smoot. Fred, how are you doing this I'm week? I'm doing good. I'm ready to get the life started. Let's get the life started. Lots to talk about in the football world, Fred. But uh, what, what's been uh, the, just the thing on the top of your mind this week? Well, watching the Cowboys get destroyed was one of those. Uh, listen friend. to me. Like Make me win. feel so good. I start baking pies and cakes at home. Make me feel real good. <laughs> It is Dallas week. We know there's a lot of hatred here for Dallas mm-hmm. week because uh, Washington, we're very passionate fans. I'll, I'll, I'll say fa- passionate fans, right? Healthy hate. Like some healthy hate is hate, unhealthy. Yes. This hate is very healthy. Yes, especially because the NFC East is anybody's to take this year. So uh, Dallas is a little bit closer in our grasp spread. I call it the game of the week and not W-E-E-K, but W-E-A-K. <laughs> Some are calling it the NFC least for that same reason, right? Because they're saying, what's going on with this division? We don't know what's going on, but this is why we're going to talk about life other than football. So this week, Fred, I had a chance to sit down with rookie defensive back Cameron Curl and talk to him about life off the football field. Check it out. Cam, thanks so much for joining me here on The Life. First off, how are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Back in the building, ready to work this next week. Yeah, we're excited to see you get to work. And talking of that, congrats on the start of your first NFL season. What's it been like for you, obviously adjusting to the NFL? Uh, It's been different, you know, a different level of football. And then with all the COVID stuff, it's been a real different rookie year, as like the other rookies from last year been telling me. Yeah, I mean, obviously very different this year, but something that wasn't different, you getting tackles in a game, you got your first tackles in your first NFL game. What was that feeling like for you? Um, I mean, it was exciting, you know, I had a little nerves before the game, but when the game started getting going, it was just football to me. Now let's get to know you a little bit more off the football field. So what are some of your hobbies that you've been doing lately, Cam? Uh, I really just be playing video games. You know, I just be chilling at my apartment playing video games. Uh, I've been the top golf. I don't really go out like that, but I'm really like just a homebody. I feel like all football players love video games, so you got to give us some more detail and insight. What video games are you playing? Uh, I, I play Madden. It was my first time being on Madden, so I had to play that. I've been playing 2K, Fortnite. Uh, I'm trying to get the uh, new Call of Duty that just came out. <laughs> and going back to this home and where you're from, I mean, if I had to ask your parents, Cam, what you were like as a kid, what would they say about you? Um, I was a chill kid. You know, I wasn't too bad. You know what I'm saying? But uh. You know, I was just a chill kid, liking sports, you know. Uh, I played basketball. I played baseball for one season. Uh, the other sports, those were just like other secondary sports I was playing when it wasn't football season, but football was always number one. And since football has always been number one, I'm curious, who were some of your role models or icons in the game that you embody your game after? Um, Really, like when I first started growing up, when I first started playing football, I was playing running back. And AP was my favorite running back. So when I got here, he was here, it was just like, it was surreal. You know what I'm saying? Because I wore 28 because of him when I was playing youth football all that. So that was really cool feeling to see him. I'm going to be a little bit nosy. What's the first thing you said to AP? We had, we had a little conversation like during the stretch lines, but it was like a little, we had a little altercation in the, uh, in the inside drill where we was tagging off and he gave me a little extra. You know what I'm saying? But then he came up to me after, like my father, you know, he was just a little frustrated. And now to just dig into your life even more, that first NFL paycheck first, what was that feeling like for you? Uh, it was crazy because I ain't never seen that much money before. So uh, it was exciting feeling, you know, heart started pumping a little bit. <laughs> What'd you buy with that check? Did you spend it all? No, nah, I ain't spend it all, but I had to get a car, you know, so I was down here without no car. I had to get a little AMG Benz. All right, I was about to say, don't deprive us. Let us know what type of car you yeah. got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a I ain't go, I ain't go too crazy. And what about something you've never told anybody about yourself? I don't know. I don't Are like you just seafood. an open book? <laughs> you tell everybody like everything? Seafood nasty. So everybody <laughs> likes seafood and I don't, they didn't keep their food in the water. Kim was an interesting individual to get to know. First off, I'm a Maryland girl, born and bred. You don't like seafood? Like, how do you not like seafood? I, I'm from Mississippi. The, uh, the, we have the guff right there. Seafood is a blessing from the gods. How it's can ordained, he not? right? But he, hey, he's an Arkansas guy, so I don't put All a pass right. in there. Wild boar is probably what he likes. <laughs> He gets a pass, but I just think that means sometime during the season or after the season, we have to take him to a good seafood spot. Right? We will. Get him a good crab cake and mm-hmm. introduce him to the area properly. How could you not like a fried lobster deal? 
I, I, I just don't get it. But <laughs> on that note, he's one of my favorites. And I think for the pick that we picked him at, we're getting plenty of value from his kids. I agree. He's been so much fun to watch. I think something else interesting he said, though, Fred, that first paycheck. I mean, yeah. I remember my first paycheck. It did not have as many zeros as Cam's. Yeah. Way less, way less comments, too. But what was that like for you? Hey, listen, I was 20 years old. I remember that Monday, they, yeah. you know, literally Miss BJ handed me my check and I opened the check and the tear just slowly came down <laughs> my face and I called my mom like, look oh, at this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and also continuing to get to know Cam, I had a chance to ask him about his motivations on and off the football field. Here's the interview presented by Nissan. What drives you? What are, what, what are your passions? I've just, I've just been loving football. I've been playing football since I was like six. So. It's just like I just built up a love for the game and then coming to NFL, being able to help my family out, you know. So that's it's just them the really two big factors. DC has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. DC's greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94-7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. Miracles, what we deliver by delivering. COVID changed everything. More demands on students, parents, educators. But there was a $4 billion education shortfall in Maryland even before COVID. We have a lot to do for our kids. Close the digital divide, provide opportunities to pursue vocational and technical education, and hire more qualified teachers. Question two will put millions into Maryland schools using revenue from sports betting. I know it won't solve every problem, but a yes vote will help our Maryland schools. The best team has a great sense of family. The best family has a great culture. And within that culture, there is great character. When you have all those elements come together, you've got a team. This is London Fletcher. Join me in supporting the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration's Red Ribbon Week and National Prescription Drug Take Back Day Talk to your loved ones about drug misuse, participate in drug prevention and education activities, and take the pledge to be drug free. Then on Saturday, October 24th, clean out your medicine cabinet of unused, unwanted expired prescription drugs to take part in National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. Visit DEATakeback.com to find a collection site near you. It's touchdown time again, and maybe time for you to score two with the Washington Touchdown Scratcher from the DC Lottery. Don't miss your special chance to win the top prize of $50,000 instantly. There's over $300,000 in total cash prizes remaining. Get your Washington Touchdown Scratcher today, only from the DC Lottery. Lots of people win. Comes some pressure, he's in trouble. Stay on his feet, and down he goes. He tried to stay up, but Ryan Kerrigan. He's struggled with the second half. Kerrigan has a hold on, and down he goes again. Turn up. Welcome back to The Life, presented by DC Lottery. Fred, it's that time of the year, that time on the schedule that we all look forward to, that Dallas name, the Cowboys name, Fred, Dallas Week. Let's talk about some of your favorite memories playing against those uh, good old boys that claim to be America's team. They're not America's team, first of all. You're in the city of Dallas. Now, one thing I did that I used to do, my first year I can remember playing them, I rode a horse to work, all right? Not only did I rode a horse to wow. work, I literally, my first time playing them, I got an interception against Quincy Carter. Nice. I, I turned that interception into a Christmas card because yes. half of my family is Dallas fans. Oh, nice. And I sent it to everybody <laughs> I could possibly send it. I loved Santana burning them apart. You can never forget the Cowboy Killer, yes. like literally <laughs> ripping them apart. Of course, all the games against Tony, like I played more against Tony Romo than any other quarterback. Yeah. So. 
And what people don't understand, we might be rivalries on Sunday, but in the offseason, we get together and, and, and we hang, you know? You, like that. you break bread together, right? Yeah, so after yeah. the rivalry's done, we will be friends, Dallas. But this week, nah, don't, yeah. don't come for us. It's gladiator time <laughs> right now. It's gladiator time. It's time to go to war. And we are now going to see the social spotlights all over social media. So up first, we have Stephen A. Smith celebrating the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Just, oh, what a blowout loss they had to the Arizona Cardinals. And Stephen A. is having every ounce of fun for him. Listen to me. I love Stephen A. Smith. And I love the fact that he, just like I, ragged the Cowboy fans because they think they are the gospel. They think they are the Lakers of the NFL. They think they are just so above everybody. But after that, what I saw the other day, it was bad. how about them Cowboys? How about them? <laughs> so up next, like, Cowboys fan uh, got kind of, well, pretty mad, Fred, to break a TV. You know how expensive TVs are? We're in COVID, like people are losing jobs, and this guy does this to his TV. I, I love it. Not only did he break the TV, he shot the TV with a gun. <sighs> only a Cowboy fan would pull a gun. That's what Cowboys do. They pull guns out <laughs> and they shoot things. All right, he shot his TV. I wonder, what was his girlfriend or his wife doing in the back, and, and what did she do after she heard the gunshot? <laughs> what happened? Signing the divorce papers. I think that's the only thing that you can do. I mean, I think that was crazy. Like, there's no explanation for it. And honestly, Dallas is probably going to get a lot more losses. So I hope he has a lot of TVs. Jerry Jones, send that man a TV. Please, a new one. Please, please. Help him out. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Smoochadamus. I hope I said that right, Fred. Smoochadamus. There you go. That name. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Don't let the comfort fool you. Don't let the attention to detail lead you to believe that a Honda is a delicate machine. <laughs> You'd be wrong. Underneath every surface that carries a Honda badge, there has always been the capacity to amaze. Rise to the challenge with the rugged performance of the Honda Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. The best team has a great sense of family. The best family has a great culture. And within that culture, there is great character. When you have all those elements come together, you've got a team. COVID changed everything. More demands on students, parents, educators. But there was a $4 billion education shortfall in Maryland even before COVID. We have a lot to do for our kids. Close the digital divide, provide opportunities to pursue vocational and technical education, and hire more qualified teachers. Question two will put millions into Maryland schools using revenue from sports betting. I know it won't solve every problem, but a yes vote will help our Maryland schools. D.C. has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. D.C.'s greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. It's 2020. Let's make a splash. Play the DC Lottery's Roaring Cash. This fall, if you're looking for an adventure, find it in the new Honda, like the turbocharged Accord, the turbocharged all-wheel drive CRV, and the all-wheel drive HRV with great features like second row magic seats. It's time to explore and say hello to the open road. Don't miss your chance to get a great deal on your favorite Honda model. When it comes to the best value, Honda leaves the others in the dust. See your local Honda dealer and start your adventure today. Oh man, just hearing what the coaches uh, are saying about him and and and, and stuff—it it, just—it makes me proud because I, I know, you know, I've seen it, but you know, to hear other people and and recognize what they're seeing out of him and how uh, he works hard and and uh, try to learn and not make the same mistakes and doing what he's doing, uh, making the team without having a lot of opportunities to show, you know, was, was a big thing, you know, and, and gaining the trust from those coaches because, you know, without a preseason, you know, without all those OTAs, you know, they had to, they had to trust, okay, this, this is a seventh round pick and we got, 
we're gonna pick him up with veterans and stuff like that. So he had to show them something. And, and that, that made me proud right there. That was Cameron Curl's father, Greg Curl, with a special message for his son presented by Xfinity. And now, as you all know, each and every Thursday, our Women of Washington podcast releases brand new episodes interviewing some of the most amazing women leaders in and out of this organization. Be sure to check out their latest right here, presented by Fresh Vine Wine. We hear you're, you are a competitive swimmer, so obviously you have a competitive spirit. Can we talk a little bit about how important that athletic spirit is when battling something like cancer is? Um, you know, it's, it's really important. And, and I'll say over, you know, the, I've met so many cancer patients now, and, um, especially gotten to know so many of the breast cancer patients from, you know, working with you all for the breast cancer awareness game. Um, and these are some tough women mm -hmm. and, um, they are prepared to go in and essentially sort of compete against this. Um, and I think it's something that just sort of comes out of you when you're going through cancer treatment. I mean, a lot of the women I've spoken to, it's just a matter of, um, I'm going to fight this and I'm going to put my best foot forward in beating this. Um, just the same as I think you would if you were either entering into a football game or for me standing on a diving block, getting ready to jump into the pool and compete you have to kind of like you tap back into what do I need to do to get through this? And um, I just think that competitive edge comes out in anybody when they don't, when they, when they know that they want to beat something and especially something like cancer, that they're not going to let it take them down. That was the Woman of Washington podcast presented by Fresh Fine Wine. Be sure to check it out and download them wherever you get your podcast. All right, Fred, it's now that time. I can't even say it, Fred. You got to say it for me. This, th this well, thing, Shmuth this time. <laughs> to give you your, your bets in my predictions. All right. Mm -hmm. Yo, let us have it, friend. Well, you know, when I look at this team after watching the Cowboys the other day, the Travis Share mockery I saw, <laughs> I right now predict that the score will be 19 for the Washington football team and 10 for the Cowboys of Dallas. What about Zeke? You think he fumbles again? Or you think uh, he's well, you know, Zeke has more nose rings than he has oh. yards right now. So, you know what, I'm oh not gosh. worried about Zeke. <laughs> and guess what? If we shut down Zeke, we make them one dimensional, putting the ball in the hand of Andy Dalton, and we see what happened when you put the ball in the hand of Andy Dalton. I like that. All right, so I'm going to rub your genie. Your, what, is, what, are, what are genies in? Mm -hmm. What's the They're thing? in the bottle. They're in the bottle. Rub the, the genie bottle. I live in a mountain, <laughs> in a cave. I'm taking some of that, and I'm going to say final score. Ooh, this is good. Let's do 23-17. I have a close game as well. All right. Who do you I think have I was closer last week, too. Who do you have I winning? have to say Washington, of course. No, you don't. We're going to get the win. The no, no, team. no. We're going to get the uh, win. Uh, I feel confident, Fred. All right. We should have won last week, yeah, we but should've. we're going to win this week. Yeah. I should have been win. a billionaire, but it is. <laughs>